So if we kind of turn towards the future um, of kind of aging, because that's one of the things, one of the key things that you look at is the future of, of technology is to help us with aging. So you gave a TED talk in 2017, which was uh, very interesting, talking about uh, the new biotech revolution. Uh, so that was like about five years ago. So uh, how do you think things have changed? And do you think they've progressed as, as you expected? Or are we doing better or not as well? Yeah, well, we, we are, I believe, at the beginning of a new biotech revolution. Um, so we are progressing very rapidly. But it's still biotech, so it's still slow. <laughs> so because you, uh, from idea to uh, let's say therapy on the market, it's at least 15 years uh, because you have to run uh, phase one, two, and three clinical trials, and that takes a few years for each trial on average, and so on. So it's going very fast, but also very slow at the same time, which frustrates me. Uh, but if you see the the pace of novel uh, developments and discoveries, it's astonishing. Uh, so I, I really believe now for the first time um, in human history we will be able to really take control of our own genetic destiny and of our own health much, much better than we ever were capable of before. Um, case in point are the gene editing technologies that are uh, out there uh, that have been recently discovered and got the Nobel Prize, rightfully so, um, and that are continuously improved on. Uh, we uh, we know, all know uh, about CRISPR very likely, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 as a method uh, to change genes when, when you're still alive, you, so you can inject yourselves with uh, CRISPR-Cas9, uh, you need to package it, but, uh, uh, and then these, these are little uh, molecular scissors that travel to your DNA to a specific spot and cut out a gene um, and um, or can disable a gene uh, or can even insert a little bit of uh, genetic information. Uh, that's the first generation. Um, but now we see much better improvements on that CRISPR-Cas9 system uh, where you can insert much larger genetic sequences into the genome because the first versions of CRISPR-Cas9 were mainly good at knocking out genes or disabling genes, but not good in inserting genetic information. But that's being improved upon a lot. And uh, now we even see companies that uh, base themselves on transposon technology. Um, transposons are actually very interesting um, genetic machines that uh, jump around in our DNA and they just uh, insert genetic information haphazardly into our genome, which is actually a good and a bad thing uh, because it enables evolution to go much faster. But it's a bad thing because one of the reasons why we age is because these transposons jump around and insert genetic sequences, they copy themselves and then insert genetic sequences haphazardly into uh, spots everywhere into our genome, which can lead to genetic instability and so on. Uh, and that causes also inflammation through activation of the sting pathway and so on. But, um, but we, we now see companies that want to harvest this transposon technology to insert controlled, in a controlled way, very large swaths of genetic information into our genome. And that's, that's very, very fascinating. It's actually one of the companies we invested in uh, uh, for, for, for the fund uh, I'm involved in. Um, but it's a very interesting technology. Um, and of course, we see so many other fascinating biotechnologies. Uh, we see improvements in bioprinting, uh, where you can print organs. Um, organs are still a bit far away, but uh, scientists are working on that, but at least print tissues. Uh, and, uh, uh, and fascinating improvements on these methods, uh, like stereolithography, where you use light that shines on a gel that contains cells. And when the light uh, hits the gel, the gel solidifies so you can print shapes or, or blood vessels at a small, uh, a much smaller level or at a much higher resolution. Um, so these are some recent advanced advancements in, in, in bioprinting, uh, for example. We also see great strides forwards in uh, stem cells. Uh, so the problem with uh, stem cells is that they've been around already for 20 years or more, uh, but currently the results have been uh, disappointing because if you inject stem cells, uh, most of them die immediately or uh, they are very fragile. Uh, so, uh, and even the few that reach the spot where they need to be, they do not graft very well. And if the, the very few stem cells are graft, they, they, after a few days, they also die. Uh, um, but we see now with those new gene editing technologies, you can genetically modify the stem cells so that they are much more, uh, let's say, uh, firm and strong and can deal with stress much better. Uh, and uh, uh, so you can reprogram them to be more efficient uh, and uh, that, that uh, and also to, you can reprogram them so that they won't be rejected by your immune system. Uh, because uh, uh, if I take if I get stem cells from someone else and I inject them, 
and they are uh, they are destroyed by my immune system. But uh, you can create scientists are now working on off the shelf stem cells uh, that uh, are universal, then that you can uh, just take off the shelf and, and would in, inject into the body to uh, repair uh, specific uh, regions and so on. Um, and uh, you can also use these stem cells to perhaps grow organs and, and so on. Um, I think also, interestingly, we saw some organ transplants with organs derived from animals into humans. So like uh, pig hearts or uh, pig kidneys that are uh, transplant transplanted into humans. Uh, these organs are also uh, genetically modified or these pigs are genetically modified so that their organs uh, won't be rejected when implanted from uh, a pig into a human. Um, and that could uh, mitigate huge shortage of organs we have. Uh, there, uh, every year, thousands of people die uh, because they are waiting for a heart uh, donation and it's, uh, and it's not available because there's a huge shortage, of course, of organs. So if you could grow uh, transplantable uh, universal organs in pigs and then, uh, yeah, transplant it into very sick humans to save their lives, uh, that, that would be also a great stride forward. And we're also seeing some great progress there too. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very fascinating field. Uh, you also have electroceuticals, you have uh, organoids uh, where you can grow little organs in, in the dish. Um, you have uh, uh, methods of activating genes through light or sound or heat. Uh, so yeah, it's a very fascinating field. And I think also uh, epigenetic treatments and transcriptomic treatments are very interesting. So this would enable to um, tweak our gene expression without having to actually cut into the genome. Uh, so uh, I remember when I was speaking about CRISPR-Cas9 and gene editing and transposons, then you still need to make cuts into the DNA. Uh, uh, but with uh, epigenetic therapies, you would just modify the gene expression without having to cut into the DNA. Uh, so you could uh, tune up uh, the activity of a gene that creates a protein in higher levels uh, that can repair the body or that can have uh, curative effects. So I think epigenetic uh, treatments are very interesting and a lot of companies are developing, are currently busy, uh, busy developing. Uh